Good morning all. Today I'm going to explain how analog to digital converters work. The sort of A to D converters that you get in these microcontrollers that are part of the Arduino system. Now an A to D converter measures the analog input voltage and gives you a binary digital output which represents that voltage or at least represents the voltage to the nearest level of accuracy that it can. So let's start by looking at the simplest A to D converter there is, which is a comparator. Now this is a one bit A to D converter. Here's the one bit digital output. Uh, I've got two resistors here, both the same value. So if the voltage on the input, which connects to the plus input of the comparator, is above 2.5 volts, in other words, above the negative input, the output will flip high. If the voltage on the positive input is below 2.5 volts, the output will flip low. So the output is just two states, one or zero, and it tells you that the input voltage is either above 2.5 volts or below 2.5 volts. It's very crude, but it is an analog to digital converter. Now, what about a two bit analog to digital converter? We want to know whether the input is above a quarter of the full range, so that would be 1.25 volts in a 5 volt system, between a quarter and a half, so between 1.25 and 2.5, between a half and three quarters, or between three quarters and the full uh, maximum 5 volts. So we need three comparators. Now if uh, we're down in this bottom range, all these comparator outputs will be low. If we're in this uh, second range, the first one goes high, the third range, the second one goes high, and so on. So we don't get a binary output. If we want to encode the output in binary with a least significant bit and a most significant bit, we need to put on some encoding logic. Now this logic works for two bits, but you can see that if we extend this to a three bit A to D converter, we'd need seven comparators, or in some designs, eight. The encoding logic becomes much more complex and this thing just starts to get out of control as we go up to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits. And if you want to go to 10 bits or 12 bits, this starts to become completely impractical. One advantage of this system is that it's incredibly fast. This is known as a flash ADC because it converts the analog voltage on the input to a digital output in a flash instantaneously, or at least near instantaneously. The only thing that slows it down our propagation delays through the encoding logic and parasitic inductances and capacitances on the analog side. So here's a simplified block diagram of the MAX 1150 uh, 8-bit flash ADC. You can see that uh, it has 255 comparators on the input. There's comparator 1, there's comparator 255. Encoding logic, multiplexers, output latches and buffers now the main benefit of a flash ADC is this, 500 mega samples per second. This thing can take half a billion samples per second. It's incredibly fast. So applications for a flash ADC include radar, digital oscilloscopes. Now what about the A to D converter inside a common or garden microcontroller like the AT Mega 328P? the microcontroller that you get in uh, our favorite Arduinos, the Uno, the Nano, and the Pro Mini. Well, it's not a flash ADC. The 328P features a 10-bit successive approximation ADC. And it's not particularly fast either. It can take between 13 and 260 microseconds to convert the input voltage into a 10-bit binary number. So how does it work? Well, you can see that one of the central components of a 10-bit ADC is actually a 10-bit DAC, a 10-bit DAC. And also look, there's a comparator. So we're kind of back to the comparator in our single one-bit flash ADC, but instead of fixing the negative input to this midway voltage using two resistors, we connect the negative input to a 10-bit DAC and now we can vary the voltage at this point and therefore vary the reference voltage to which we're comparing our input voltage.
Now we have to do this in a sequence of steps. And in fact, the first comparison is this comparison. We set the DAC to two and a half volts, the midway voltage, uh, as it is on the single one bit uh, A to D converter. And then we say, is the input voltage greater or less than the midway point, two and a half volts? Now let's say that the input voltage here is greater than our reference voltage, two and a half volts, which we've put on our DAC. The output of the comparator will go high and we record that one in the MSB of our result register. That is the most significant bit of the result. Now at this point we know that the voltage is somewhere between two and a half volts and five volts. So the next comparison, a bit like this uh, two bit uh, flash DAC, is we want to know whether it's higher or lower than this point here, the three quarters volt, uh, voltage, it will be 3.75 volts. So we then, as a second step, put 3.75 volts on our 10 bit DAC. Now let's say the input voltage is three volts, so it would actually be lower than 3.75. The next result will be a zero, and that goes into the next bit of the result register. So the next comparison will be, be uh, between 2.5 volts and 3.75 volts. So we'll go halfway between those, we'll do another comparison, we'll put another result in the results register. But there's a problem here, because we're doing this sequentially, the input voltage may well now have moved. So a successive approximation ADC needs a little bit of extra hardware. We need a hold capacitor and we need a MOSFET switch. And what we do is we close the switch briefly before we start the conversion. We then open the switch and the input voltage is held on this capacitor. And this capacitor is large enough that it can hold the value for the 10 uh, successive approximation cycles. Now, once we've been through this process 10 times, we'll have our full 10 bit result in the result register. But you can see that there's some quite complex logic here, which has to take the comparator output, drop these result bits into successive locations within the result register. The whole thing has to be clocked. So there's a, an ADC clock system. So you can see that the ADC subsystem in the 328P contains this 10 bit DAC, the comparator. They've called it a sample and hold comparator. So they've included the sample and hold capacitor in there. Uh, the conversion logic for running through all 10 uh, comparisons, a clock prescaler, because the ADC clock runs a fair bit slower than the system clock. Here's the result register. Here's the status register uh, for setting the clock prescale. Uh, this AND gate here provides an interrupt request if you want to know uh, when the conversion is complete, if the CPU has gone off and done something else. The CPU isn't needed to control this process. It's all standalone. But of course, the CPU needs to initiate it, pick up the result when it's given the interrupt request. Now, in addition, there's a multiplexer here because the input, which goes to the plus input of the comparator, can be from one of a number of sources, eight individual analog inputs or the Bangat reference or ground or even a temperature sensor. Now, this conversion process takes a little bit of time. It says uh, the successive approximation circuitry requires an input clock frequency between 50 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. So it's a fair bit slower than the 16 megahertz, or in fact, 20 megahertz maximum clock frequency that the CPU can run at. And although there are 10 steps to convert the analog voltage to a digital binary output, in fact, it takes 13 ADC clock cycles to do the whole conversion. Uh, the sample and hold process takes the first one and a half ADC clock cycles. And then the last uh, bit, which is writing the finished conversion into the data registers, uh, fills up the remaining time. So the ADC converter in a typical microcontroller doesn't convert analog to digital in a flash. In fact, it takes a significant amount of time to do it. So it's a little bit slow, the A to D converter inside the AT Mega 328P, but for a chip that costs less than a pound, a 10-bit ADC is quite impressive. So back in the 1980s, I was building an audio sampling system, and I've still got it. Um, and the ADC was actually quite complicated. It's all in pieces. You can see here's the DAC, and here's the uh, LM311 comparator. There's an LF398 sample and hold 
uh, circuit. There's the sample and hold capacitor. And the successive approximation register is actually a completely separate chip. It's this, it's the AM2502, which was on a separate circuit board. So analog to digital conversion back in the 1980s was a whole lot harder than it is now. So when you're writing your Arduino software and you do an analog read, just spare a thought for the complexity of what's actually going on inside the AT Mega328P. Cheerio.